Good morning, everybody. If we can make our way into the auditorium, find our seats, we're going to get started with worship this morning. Lots of extra stuff going on today, and we'll fill you in more as we get there. But for now, let's sing. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves the children dear, children far away or near. They are safe when in his care, every day and everywhere. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus, take this heart of mine, make it pure and only thine. On the cross you died for me, I will try to live for thee. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. All right, and this morning, all of our songs have been requested by one of our kids, whether that's starting at a three-year-old, going all the way up to a senior in high school. So there is going to be a little bit more of a mix this morning. But remember, we're trying to set a good example for our kids this morning. So let's sing all together this morning. Don't be afraid. Get into it. I know it may have been a few years for you, but here we go. Roll the gospel chariot along. Roll the gospel chariot along. Roll the gospel chariot along. And we won't tag along behind. If our sister's in the way, we will stop and pick her up. If our sister's in the way, we will stop and pick her up. If our sister's in the way, we will stop and pick her up. And we won't tag along behind. If our brother's in the way, we will stop and pick him up. If our brother's in the way, we will stop and pick him up. If our brother's in the way, we will stop and pick him up. And we won't tag along behind. But if the devil's in the way, we will run right over him. If the devil's in the way, we will run right over him. If the devil's in the way, we will run right over him. And we won't tag along behind. All right, so once again, good morning. We're very thankful to have each and every one of you here with us this morning, especially on this day where we're going to celebrate our backpack blessing where we have a chance to encourage our kids through this school year, and we'll get more on the details of exactly what all we're going to do with that here in just a little bit. Uh, number one, we'd like you to check in this morning. Either fill out the forms that are on the end of the pews, pass those down the aisle, or you can check in online at the address that's there on the screen. Uh, if you're a visitor, go ahead and fill out one of those cards that's in the front of the pew, and you can put that in the plate as it comes by here in just a little bit. Two things to look ahead to signing up for. Number one, if you are a teacher in fifth grade and below, here, here Bible class teacher, fifth grade and below, or you would like to be one in the future, if you would uh, let me know an RSVP for a meal, we'll plan for extra. So if you happen to forget or if plans change and you'll be there uh, next week, next Sunday afternoon, we're going to have our teacher's luncheon. It's catered. You don't have to bring anything. It's a thank you. So we're not going to ask you to do a whole lot for it. But we want you to be there. Uh, and I'd ask, just let me know, and that'll allow us to have the best count possible. The other thing is it is time to sign up for our small groups. We're getting those prepped and ready. That table's right out here in the lobby. Sign up on any of the sheets. We're going to work on organizing those groups later. So just because you sign up on a particular sheet doesn't assign you a group right now. 
but we would like you to get that done. Remember, it's going to be a little bit different this year. We're going to allow the ladies to focus on themselves, the men to focus on themselves, and then also some time together. So I would encourage you to be part of that ministry this year. Uh, Bus the Bus finished up this week. Uh, Again, more details on what all we did with that, but I just want to start by saying thank you to each and every one of you who participated, who brought stuff. That bus was a very large bus, and we had a lot of stuff put in it. So I appreciate that, and I'll give you some more details here in a little bit. Last thing, like I said, all of our songs today were picked by the kids, okay? We asked them, what were some of the songs that you enjoy singing? What are some of the songs that mean a lot to you? And then we thought about why in the world would we do that? Why would we sing some of these kids' songs during worship? Because it's easy to quantify them and put them in a box and say, well, after you get so old, we're not going to sing them anymore. But what was the point in singing them in the first place? And so what we had to do is we looked at what are some of the deep spiritual meanings, what are some of the basic spiritual truths? Dan's going to be talking about back to the basics that we try to teach our kids through these songs from their earliest of ages. And so in this next song... We're going to be singing deep and wide, and Dan said, what's the point of deep and wide? So we sat around, and Andy said something, and he said something, and I got to thinking, and so I just want you to be thinking about this as we sing deep and wide. In John chapter 4, you've got the woman at the well, and a little bit later, in John chapter 7, Jesus again teaching people, and in both of those cases, he mentions the fact that he is the living water, and if you take of that living water... It's something that's eternal and everlasting inside of you. So let's sing. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Oh, it's been a while since y'all been in class. Deep and deep and is a fountain flowing deep and now you're catching on. No deep or wide. And and there's a fountain flowing and ah and and there's a fountain flowing. Now this is the challenge. Here you go. And and there's a flowing and uh, come on and and there's a flowing now see the thing is y'all are just like the kids it doesn't matter how old you get you get to that point and you just go if my hands come down and I don't participate then I don't get it wrong Don't be afraid. Sing along. Again, this is one of those opportunities where we really get a chance to spend time with our kids. And this is what it's about today. We're wanting to encourage our kids. We're wanting to show them that worship is something that you do beginning at the beginning of your life. And you go through it the rest of your life. And Dan's going to be talking about the deeper spiritual things we're going to discuss. And what you need to build into your families later on. Let's continue to sing. Let's go to 12 Men Went Spy on Canaan. Twelve men went to spy on Canaan, ten were bad and two were good. What did they see when they spied on Canaan? Ten were bad and two were good. Some saw giants big and tall, some saw grapes and clusters fall. Some saw God rule over all, ten were bad and two were good. Let's do it again, a little faster. Here you go. Twelve men went to spy on Canaan, ten were bad and two were good. What did they see when they spied on Canaan? Ten were bad and two were good. Some saw giants big and tall. Some saw grapes and clusters fall. Some saw God rule over all. Ten were bad and two were good. All right, there you go. Now, let's stand as we continue to sing this morning. We're going to now jump from some of our younger kids' songs. Go ahead and stand up. It's all right. Stand up. Go from some of our younger kids' songs to some that were requested by some of our older students. And again, this Magnificat is something straight out of God's Word. It's one of the joyous prayers that Mary prays when she finds out that good news. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God. My Savior, my soul magnifies the Lord. 
my spirit rejoices in God. My glory be to God the Father, and glory be to God the Son. My glory be to God the Spirit, my spirit be to God.
Let's pray. Our good Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and this time that we have to come worship you, to come worship you with other Christians uh, without any fears. God, today, uh, as we focus our, um, our worship on you, we also keep in mind the kids that will be uh, starting back to school and that they'll be um, put in a position of, um, of growing, of growing their minds and their bodies and their spirits. And as they do this, Lord, I pray that they enter school with uh, an open mind of learning and that they go to school with a pleasant attitude, uh, one that is willing to get along with all people, and one that uh, ultimately is reflecting of the way that you would want them to be. Also, Lord, for the teachers that will be starting school, uh, may they have the energy and the strength and the clarity of mind to instruct the students, uh, no matter how good or bad the student may be. Lord, I pray that they are um, an example of how you would want them uh, to treat other children. And in Jesus' name, amen. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me and tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. It tells of one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe. Who in his sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. Matthew 18, Matthew 18, verses 3 and 4. <clears throat> it says, and he said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> Jesus not only instructed us and told us to be humble, to be humble like a child, but he demonstrated it to us. Three times he asked the Father to remove this cup from him as he began, as he suffered in Gethsemane, preparing for his crucifixion. But he very humbly uh, accepted the will of the Father and suffered and died in our place. <clears throat> I'd like to read sec uh, Philippians 2, first 11 verses. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with his spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interest, but also to the interest of others. <clears throat> it says, your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, 
being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. As we partake of this Lord's Supper, let us do so with humility, with gratitude, and with joy of what Christ has done for us. Let us pray. <clears throat> Our Father, we thank you so much for your love, for the plan of salvation, that you would accept Christ's suffering and death in our place. Thank you, Father, for the gift of righteousness. Thank you for this bread which we partake of, which represents to us Christ's body. In Jesus' name, amen. Christ gave his body for us. <clears throat> Christ also shed his blood for us, and his blood cleanses us white as snow. <clears throat> Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you so much for the gift of Jesus Christ, for his righteousness. Thank you, Father, that you would accept his offering, his blood, in our place. But Lord, please forgive our sinful thoughts and deeds and our weaknesses. Thank you, Father, for this, this time to be with brothers and sisters and this time to celebrate Christ and what all that he has done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. O oh Lord, prepare me, be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living 
told not to worry about the things of this life, what should we shall eat, what we shall wear. If we put God and his kingdom first, all these things will be added to us. <clears throat> we are very blessed people. And I'm turning to 1 Corinthians 16, where the Apostle Paul is giving us an example of a collection that they were making for the, 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 the church in Jerusalem. It says in verse 1, now about the collection for God's people, do what I told the Galatian churches to do. On the first day of every week, each of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with his income, saving it up so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. We have the opportunity to give back of our physical blessings to God at this time. Our God, we thank you so much for all the rich blessings you've given us for our means of income. We thank you, Father, for this great country we live in and the freedoms we enjoy. Lord, help each of us to give back to you as we've prospered to do so cheerfully. In Jesus' name, amen. If I could have all of our elders go ahead and come up here on stage and get ready for our kids to be making their, their way up. And then those that are going to help with the t-shirts, if you can go ahead and come on up as well. A few instructions for our kids as they start to come up on stage for our backpack blessing today. If you have a three-year-old to a fifth grader, they're going to come over here and they'll get their t-shirt and they'll pick up a backpack and then they'll come join our elders up on the stage. If you are a junior high, a sixth grader, and up to a senior in high school, you'll get your t-shirts and your backpacks on this side of the stage and then come up on the, sta up on the stage, staying stage a lot, that's all right. Uh, but if you'll start making your way up, and then if you are a visitor with us here this morning, we have plenty and we would love for you to join us in this time of prayer as well. So go ahead, we're going to sing the next two songs, and during that time, if the kids can come up, again, three-year-olds through fifth graders on this side, Sixth graders through high school up on this side. Let's sing. I stand to praise you, but I fall to my knees. My spirit is willing, but my flesh is so weak. Like the fire in my soul. And the flame make me old. Lord, you know where I've been. So light the fire in my heart again. Light the fire in my soul. And the 
flame make me old Don't you know where I've been So light the fire in my heart again As I did thirst for the water so my soul so longs after, long after you, my soul, my soul thirsts for the living God, the living God. Yes, my soul yes, my longs soul after, you. Longs after you. you, and I pour out my soul deep within me. And I pour out my soul deep within me, deep within me, I pour out my soul, draw me deeper, Lord, deeper, Lord, in you, draw me deeper, Lord, deeper, seated. Before Stan comes up and offers his prayer, I just wanted to give you a few bits of information just to know that we did something a little bit different this year. In addition to giving all the kids a t-shirt that you see up here, we also gave them all a backpack. In the bus, we had thousands of school items. Literally, we had 1,100 individual pencils, and I could give you all the stats on everything else that showed up. But that allowed us to give what you see in those pictures, each one of these kids has either the high school backpack that's the smaller picture you see or the elementary backpack that's on the other side. Then we gave stuff to the Joy Ministry, to Precious Pottery. We have the, what's left in the bus that you saw this morning is going go to go uh, to the Bread of Life Ministry. So we were able to bless a lot of people through your generosity. And what we're going to encourage our kids to do, and all the kids and their parents got this letter, we're going to encourage them to take these school supplies that are in their backpacks and find a way to bless the others around them with those items. Whether they give it to their teacher, to a friend, or they just hold it in their locker for a later date, we're encouraging our families to get together and discuss ways that they can be a light in the classroom. So thank you for all the things that you've brought and blessed us with and blessed our community with. And now I'm going to have Stan come on up and say a prayer for all of us. Some of you might think we're a little bit behind on this as school started last week, but um, I think it was wise of us to wait because there were a lot of families taking last minute vacations last weekend and, and this is very important and we wanted all of our children to get this blessing. Um, I can't think of a better example than we have than, than the interaction that Jesus had with little children. Uh, in the book of Mark it's recorded that these verses. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant, and he said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. And then he took the children in his arms, he placed his hands on them, and he blessed them. We're going to do that today. We're going to ask that the elders and the, and the ministers, I, I don't see the ministers all up here, but come on, Dan, and uh, Jason up here. Come on. Uh, let's, let's put our hands, and as a congregation, we're an extended family, and these are our children. I know a lot of us uh, already have our children uh, pass through this stage in life, but we know the pressures and the dangers that these kids are going to face, and we just want to bless them today. So let's pray together. Lord, this morning we ask that you would protect our children. Father, protect them spiritually, emotionally, and physically as they begin this academic year. Father, help each one of them to trust in you and to know the peace that is beyond understanding. Father, we ask that you would strengthen them and, and give them courage. 
that they can avoid the situations that would bring, be harmful to them. Father, grant them discernment to recognize and know the things that are right and the things that are true and to be able to avoid those things that are wrong. Give them the desire and the ability to uh, gain knowledge and wisdom this year. And Father, we just ask that it be a joyous adventure for each one of them this year. Father, we also want to pray for their teachers and all those that come in contact with them. Father, we know that uh, it would be much better if they are kind and compassionate and sincere in their duty to train and educate our children, and we pray for that. Father, as we close, we just want to say guard their minds, guard their hearts, and may they always remember that you love them and you place great value on them. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So now, if you have a child with you, ages 2 through 6 this morning, it is time to dismiss them to children's worship. So if I'll let the younger ones, if y'all can start heading off, and parents, if you want to kind of catch them in the aisles or whatever, and help them down to children's worship. Yeah, if you normally go to children's worship, you'll go to children's worship. Go ahead. Yeah. All right, and then after our younger ones... Older guys and gals, y'all can head back to your seats as well. <laughs> now, I saw lots of parents taking pictures and grandparents taking pictures. And just, you know, if you want another good photo op, this is also kind of a plug for the church as well. You know, grab your kid in their backpack, take a picture out in front of the church bus and share that on Facebook and everything. That'd be great as well. So, before Dan comes up and brings his lesson about going back to the basics this morning, he requested, and it was a double request. We had kids request it too, but Dan said, oh, do that one before the lesson. So here we go. We're going to sing the wise man and the foolish man before we have our scripture reading and Dan's lesson this morning. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. And the rains came tumbling down. The rains came down as the floods came up. The rains came down as the floods came up. The rains came down as the floods came up. And the wise man's house stood firm. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. And the rains came tumbling down. The rains came down as the floods came up. The rains came down as the floods came up. The rains came down as the floods came up. And the foolish man's house went splat. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessings come, come down. The blessings come down as the prayers go up. The blessings come down as the prayers go up. The blessings come down as the prayers go up. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. If you're following along in the Pew Bible, you can find this passage on page 1867. We have much to say about this, but it is hard to explain because you are slow to learn. In fact, though by the time that you... Excuse me. In fact, though by the time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk 
being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Thank you, Derek. It's been a great morning so far. Doesn't it encourage you to see all those kids up here? It's wonderful, wonderful. And uh, those kids are going back to school, as you know, and the buses are running and the lights are blinking on the school zones and they're going back to the daily grind of learning and all those kids wish summer would keep going. But you got to go back to homework and back to assignments and back to tests and back to P.E. and back to football practice. Speaking of which, got some footballers up here. I've got a skinny grandson in the seventh grade. I'm talking skinny. You can take that little guy and you can just count his ribs. Just boom, boom, boom down there, you know. About 90 pounds maybe dripping wet with rocks in his pocket. And he's going out for seventh grade football, and he's going to get killed. <laughs> uh, that's just all there is to it. He did not tell his mother about summer physical training that he's supposed to have before football because he didn't think he needed it. Like I said, he's going to get killed. But uh, he's, he's going to go into seventh grade football, and uh, he's uh, back to it right now. So I'm wondering if he's still alive or what. People are going back to band. People are going back to their sports. Today we're going to talk about what they're going to do in school. They're going to go back to the basics, back to the basics. My little tiny grandbaby, we, you know, we're going to be singing A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And maybe the books, the Bible song. The schools right now are going to try to reestablish the basics. Because the basics, and people don't really agree what those are, but you've got, like we used to sing when I was little, reading and writing and arithmetic, you know. That talk about the hickory stick, that doesn't work anymore, does it? <laughs> But uh, anyway, reading and writing and arithmetic are very, very important because if you can't read and you can't compose what you read and, and give your ideas to others and if you can't compute mathematics in some small degree, you're going to have a hard time in life. Some people think life skills uh, are uh, important as basics and how to get along with other people. We certainly know that. Character building is important. Um, <clears throat> back to the fundamentals we're talking about today. And, you know, whatever football program this is on the picture, I never was part of it because it looks like those guys are more or less hugging each other up there. But in mine, there wasn't any hugging. There was a, there was a lot of hitting, but they're going to learn how to block. They're going to learn how to tackle. They're going to learn how to run. They're going to learn how to throw. They're going to learn how to catch. And on those basics is going to be built everything else that the game is about. When they're going to play basketball, they're going to learn how to dribble. They're going to learn how to pass. They're going to learn how to shoot. And those things are the basics on which everything else is built. We all get the idea. We all get the concept in our life that if we don't really learn the fundamentals, if we don't learn the basics, we can't really be good at anything and we can't really build on things. Well, <clears throat> you know, one of my favorite songs to <clears throat> when I was living in Texas, <clears throat> pardon me, <clears throat> and even after I moved away from Texas, <clears throat> I used to listen to country music. It's hard to believe, but that's true. And war boots and the whole thing. <clears throat> but there was that uh, song about Luke and Bach, Texas. Remember that one? <clears throat> Thank you, John. Let's go to Luke and Bach. Okay, so Cindy said, please don't sing that. <clears throat> but part of that song says, maybe we ought to get back to the basics of love. That's what you need to learn, young man, is the basics of love. You're fixing to get married. <laughs> He's having a shower this afternoon. He probably had a shower this morning. Yeah. <laughs> But, <clears throat> yeah, okay, I'm off of you now, Matthew. I'm not going to bother you anymore. All right, so we need to get back to the basics of God today. That's where I'm really headed. Because I really believe that if we don't get the basics of God down, 
we're never going to be able to build an effective and joyous and, and uh, lasting Christian life down. So today we're going to really give some thought to the basics of God. Number one on your little outline, and you guests and visitors, you have it in your bulletin on a little sheet there. <clears throat> you can fill in the blanks. There is one creator. There's one God to whom we are all accountable. 1 Timothy 2 verse 5 says, There is one God and one mediator between God and man, himself, man, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Johnny. All right. <clears throat> So there's just one God. It's not Allah who has no son. It's not Buddha who is just a guy that reached nirvana. <clears throat> it's not the Hindu gods, the snake god or the elephant god. It's not Kali. It's not Krishna. It's not the spirits of animism. It is the great I am that we read about in Exodus chapter 3. It's the one who is and was and is to come, the Almighty. Deuteronomy 6.4 is the Shema. That the Israelites said every day, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Did you know that the Lord God, the one God, is the God that we must serve? And I'm just going to ask you this morning, what position, what place does Yahweh, the Lord God of Israel, the creator of the universe, have in your life. I don't think it's first in all of our lives. He must be first and final. He must ultimately be the one that our allegiance is pledged to. The first commandment in the Ten Commandments. Listen. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You cannot serve God and mammon. Matthew 6 verse 24 we can't have mammon or riches or wealth as our God and serve that for first and foremost. We can't have popularity or approval as our God and serve the God of Israel at the same time. We can't have pleasure as, a, as our God. We must have God, Yahweh, as our God and none other before him. <clears throat> In Isaiah 55, 6, the Bible says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Are you seeking God in your life? You know, we were just told up here that we need to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Acts 17, 26 and 27, Paul said God made us to seek God. If happily we might feel after him and find him, for he's not far from any one of us, for in him we live and move and have our very being. Are you seeking God first. Some of the families in here I think are seeking him second or third or fourth in our lives and we're not really seeking him first. And some of the parents in here need to realize that our kids are looking more at what we do than what we say and they can tell whether we're seeking God first in our life or not. There's one God, church. He's the almighty creator of the universe. And he says that he comes first, that we should worship him and none other. That's basic. If we don't get that basic down, <clears throat> we can't build a life of, of spirituality on anything else. Number two today, <clears throat> this is basic. Yahweh, our creator, has spoken to us through his written word. You say, well, I know that, preacher. Do you really? Do you really? Hebrews 1, verse 1 and 2, God, who in many parts and many ways spoke at times past through the, to the fathers, through the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. The creator of the universe has spoken in clear language to his people. Francis Schaeffer, the great theologian, uh, said he is there and he is not silent. The psalmist centuries ago said, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But what? But his delight is in what, church? The law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate <clears throat> day and night. That's Psalm 1. Are you meditating in God's law? Some of us barely give it a look and don't really care that much what it says. 
But God wants us to care what it says. God has spoken to us through his written word. In Deuteronomy 6, after the great Shema, which said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. And verse 6, it says, These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. And you shall, as I rememorized it, teach them diligently to your children. And you shall speak of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up and you will bind them as frontless before your eyes and write them on the doorposts of your gates. What, a, what kind of a big deal is this in your life? Notice the first part of this. These commandments that I give you this day, those written down things in God's word are to be upon your hearts. How can they be upon your heart if you don't look at them, if you don't pay attention to them, if they're not a priority in your life? <clears throat> What's on your mind every day? Is it God's word? What's on your children's mind every day? What priority is given in your home, in your family to the word of God. What place does God and his word have in the conversations of your family, of your house? How is success measured in your family? In Joshua 1, verse 7 and 8, God told Joshua, Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Now watch this. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left. Now some people think, that we're sticklers here. We're sticklers about trying to do everything by the word of God. <clears throat> what does that say right there? <clears throat> it says, do not turn from it. <clears throat> do not turn from it to the, to the right or to the left. What does that mean? That means stay right on it. Stay right on God's word. Do exactly what God's word says. Why? So that you may prosper. Wherever you go, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. What is success? It is when our children live their lives and when we live their lives according to God's word and under his will. 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is breathed out by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped to every good work. Be taught by God's word this year. Be taught by it. Really let yourself be taught by the word of God and learn what it says humbly. Be corrected by God's word this year. Be humble enough with if you need to be corrected by what God's word says. Be corrected. Be trained by God's word in righteousness so that you're more aware of what you need to be doing. Hebrews 2 verse 1, for this reason we must pay much closer attention to the things we have heard lest we drift away from them. Folks, drifting away from the word of God is so easy and there, many of us are actually doing it, frankly. Because we're not paying enough attention to what it really says. What does it matter? What's the difference if we do it a little bit different here and do things a little bit differently there? It does matter. And I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't tell you that it matters because that's what the scripture says. That it really does matter. Now we sang that little song right before the sermon about the wise man building his house upon a rock. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 24, everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house upon a rock. And so while we sit and maybe sometimes we roll our eyes when the kids are doing this, folks, if you want to build your house, the house of your life, on something solid that's going to carry you through every storm and every trouble and every trial of life that's going to stand you in good stead spiritually, that's going to encourage your heart. you got to build your life on the words of the Lord Jesus Christ and his apostles. Hear them, said Jesus, and do them. <clears throat> so what's the deal here? What's the bottom line? There's one God, and we must seek him first. In our life. And that one God church. That one God has spoken to us. In his written word. The Bible. 
And we need to do according to what that word says and not turn to the right hand or to the left. Now that's book. That's book. Number three. This is basic. Basic Bible. We have sinned against our creator and he holds us guilty. You know the Bible says in 1 John 3 verse 4 that sin is a transgression of God's law. And we've transgressed it in numerous ways. All of us have. And when we sin, according to many passages like Leviticus 4, 13, and 22, God holds us guilty in his mind. Now, guilt is not a feeling, as we've said before. Real guilt, I'm not talking about the, the feelings that we legitimately have. Some of them are, can be described as we feel guilty. I'm not arguing with that. What I'm saying is that in the Bible... Say, this is my purview, my job, to teach you the Bible. In the Bible, guilt is in the mind of God. And it's real in God's mind until God lets it go. See? And so God holds us guilty. Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, nor his ear dull that he can't hear. But your iniquities, iniquities means your lawless deeds, your transgressions of the law. Your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Sin separates man from God. Do we understand that? <clears throat> All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 6, 23. The wages of sin is spiritual death. Romans 3, 23 was the first one. That was Romans 6, 23. Ephesians 2, 1. You were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you once lived. That means we're separated from God. Many, many people in the world, if we really read the Bible and we don't try to get politically correct with it and smooth it over and erase its real message. Many, many people in the world, many, many people in our town, maybe people right here are lost in sin, separated from God. Ephesians 2.12 describes that. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers to the covenants of the promise, having no hope and without God in the world. That's what it means to be lost. So what's the deal, preacher? Why are you saying this? Because Bible basics require that we understand that, that sin is a real problem. And that every human being, every person, every man and woman and child that grows to the age of accountability needs to understand that sin is a problem that I must deal with. That I must let God deal with. And I must take care of that with God's help uh, by accepting his grace. So it affects our eternity. Now many of us may be going about our lives right now just uh, lollygagging along and we may be going along to back to school night and football practice and all the rest of it. We might not give a hoot about sin and about grace and about God but we better focus in on what's important here. It's more important than any of those things. It's more important than whether you get a, a C or a B or an A on your report card. It really is. In fact, it's way more important than that, okay? Number four, God has made a way for us to be forgiven and enjoy his grace. Now, remember the second point, you probably don't. There is one God, our creator, and what has God done? Second, he has spoken to us in his written word. Now, listen to me, church. The only way, this is really, really important, the only way you can really know how to receive the grace of God is not through some priest. It's not through some preacher, through me or anybody else. It's only through what you learn in the written word of God, the Bible. That's the only way that you can really know. We know from the Bible, John 3, 16, that God so loved this world, this lost world, that he gave his only son. We know from the Bible in Romans 5 verse 8 that God committed his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We know from Romans 5 17, and this is really important, listen to this. If by the trespass of the one man death reigned through the one, it's talking about Adam and when he let sin into the world. 
Much more shall those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through Jesus Christ. We have to receive or accept personally the grace of God. But don't, don't stop there. How exactly do we do that? And how do we know how to do that? The only way we know is by what we read in the written word of God. So, it's not by saying the sinner's prayer that you receive the grace of God. And I know that many of you probably have done that. But there's nowhere in the Bible, the written word of God, that says to do that. It is not by asking Jesus to be your savior. That's not what scripture says. God's word tells us how to receive his grace. In Acts chapter 2, verse 38, when Jesus was proclaimed the risen Lord and had died for our sins, the people asked what to do. And the apostles of Jesus Christ said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And notice the apostles didn't say, since you've already been saved, since you've already said the sinner's prayer, you need to be baptized so you can join the church. That's not what the apostles said. They said, be baptized. First, you've got to repent, which means change your mind. You've got to decide that you're going to do what the Lord wants you to do and make Jesus Lord of your life. And then you've got to be baptized for the forgiveness of sins. At the Last Supper, Jesus said, This is my blood of the new covenant, which was poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Was Jesus' blood poured out so that because people's sins were already forgiven? What Was it? No. His blood was poured out so that sins might be forgiven. And that's the same truth that we have here for accepting the grace of God in baptism. So that's what the Bible says. And then, of course, point number four our relationship with our Creator after we're baptized into Christ is dependent on our efforts in doing His will. And some of us are making a good effort and some of us are not making much of an effort. And I love you. And I've been here with you a long time. Some of you, you're probably right, maybe too long. But I love you. And the only way for you to, to continue a relationship with God is to continue in your life to make a concerted effort to do God's will. Romans 8 verse 4. The righteous requirement of the law is fulfilled in us. Who do not walk according to the flesh. But according to the spirit. Now that doesn't mean we're going to be perfect. Because scripture says we're saved by God's grace. We can't earn God's grace. We're saved by God's grace. When we accept it the way he says. But what it does mean is we've got to be walking in a manner. Living in a manner that shows a real effort. To keep the commandments of God. Very simple. 1 John 2 verse 4. Whoever says I know him. And does not keep his commandments. Is a liar. And the truth is not in him. How many people are in that category. That say I know God. But they're blatantly not keeping. Many of the commandments of God in their life. And not trying to. 1 John 1 verse 7. If we walk in the light. As he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ keeps on cleansing us from sin. As I'm trying to do the Lord's will, notice how I said I'm making an effort, I'm trying, I'm never going to get it perfect. But as I'm really trying to do God's will, that blood of Christ just keeps on cleansing my sin and I stand in the grace of God. But it's not for people that do not try. There's an old song, it's too old fuddy-duddy to sing anymore. But it's words are so true. It's words are true. And you know what makes the most difference in God's word about a song? It's the words of the song. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. So the words of the song need to be scriptural and they need to give a good message to it. Listen to this old fuddy-duddy song. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still 
and with all who will trust and obey. Man, that's God's truth. That is right. That is good. And maybe we need to jazz it up with some new music or something, but those words need to be drilled into the heart of everyone. They come right out of 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7. In 2 Peter 1 verse 10, the Bible says we got to keep making an effort. And our kids are going to have to buckle down now that they go back to school and they're going to have to start doing homework and they're going to have to spend some thought and effort on learning and doing and stuff for school. But folks, we need to do the same thing with God. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election for if you do these things, you will never stumble and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Put effort into schoolwork. Put effort into business. Put effort into sports. Put effort into the social clubs. Put effort into your recreation. But oh, I ought to be ashamed for mentioning that first and not saying before you do anything else. Put your effort and your heart into your relationship with God. Maybe it's time we get back to the basics of God. You think? There are four things we've talked about today, and they're basic. There is one God, the creator, to whom we are all accountable. Number two, God has spoken to us through his written word. Number three, we have sinned against that God. Number four, he has given us a way to accept his wonderful grace. He has sent his son. And number five, when we've accepted his grace... We live in that grace by continuing to put an effort into our relationship with God. Are these basic things shaping your life? I don't know about you, but every time this time of year comes around, and maybe several other times, I need an admonition to my own soul to get back to the basics of God. If we can help you obey God this morning, wouldn't that be a joy? If we can pray with you about something, if we can help you obey the gospel, won't you come as we stand together as we sing. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I know I can stand secure. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I put my hope in your holy word. I put my hope in your holy word. I have a living hope, I have a future, God has a plan for me, on this I'm sure, on this I'm sure, Jesus, you're my firm foundation, I know I can stand secure. Jesus, to my firm foundation, I put my hope in your holy word. I put my hope in your holy word. Your word is faithful, mighty in power. God will deliver me of this I'm sure. On this I'm sure, Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I know I can stand secure. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I put my hope in your holy word. I put my hope in your holy word. Be seated, please. Stand up with me, Nicholas. This is Nicholas Meeks, and, and he's going into what grade this year? Sixth grade. He's in the sixth grade, and he's been thinking a lot about giving his life to the Lord for some time and talking with his mom and dad and others. He understands why he's doing this. So I got to ask you, Nicholas, are you ready to make Jesus Christ the Lord and master of your life? Yes, sir. Amen, brother. We're going to baptize you into the, 
into the death of Christ so your sins can be forgiven, okay? Your dad's going to do that. Let's go upstairs. It's a very joyous day. It's been a great day and a great worship service already, but what better way to cap things off than this example that's going to be set before us while they're getting ready. If you'll grab one of these things that still is in the back of the pew, grab you a songbook. We're going to sing a couple of songs. Let's start with number 453. Number 453, Love Lifted Me. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, Love lifted me. All my heart to him I give, ever to him I cling. In his blessed presence live, ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true merits my soul's best song. Faithful, loving service to, to him belongs. Love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Souls in danger look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, billows his will obey. He your Savior wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Turn to number 83. Number 83. God is so good. God is so good, God is so good, God is so good, He's so good to me. Making me whole and saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Please reveal your will for me so I can serve you for eternity. Use my life in every way. Take hold of it today. I want to thank you, Lord. For loving me, 
Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. While we wait on Nicholas to come down, I've just got a, a few things to say this morning. Um, I'd like to say some appreciation to Hunter Love, who's been our uh, summer intern this, this summer, and uh, he's done a lot of work, even the logo that you see on, a lot of the t on our T-shirts. He's done a lot of work that has been very beneficial for our congregation this summer, and he, he's going to be heading back to Freed Hardman soon, so I want to say thanks to him for that. Um, we have Moniz trip. His visit to us is going to be coming up in September. Keep that in mind. And um, Brother J.B. Taylor wanted us to keep uh, Dwayne Bell in mind. Dwayne's going through some testing at Vanderbilt, so if you would, keep him in your prayers. Um, as always, the, there will be an elder up here at front. If anyone would like to have prayers at the end of uh, the service today, we'll be glad to to sit down and pray with you. So if you would, please be standing, and Tom's going to lead us in closing prayer. Let's pray. Father, you are such an awesome God. We see your awesomeness that surrounds us every day as we look around and see the beauty of your creation. Father, this morning we celebrate as young Nicholas comes forward and puts you on a baptism. Father, we celebrate with Chris and Jennifer, and we are proud to have him as our brother. Father, we offer a special prayer to you this morning for all the children and young adults that are starting back to school. Father, we ask that you keep them safe and watch over them. We ask that you let them be kind to each other. We ask that you let the schools be welcoming of you be with their teachers, their coaches, administrators, their counselors. Father, give them godly wisdom and be with the parents and family as they entrust the education and care of their children to others for the next nine months. Father, please let this be a special school year for all of them. Father, watch over and care for us now as we go to our classes. Be with us always. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>